Greetings, fellow curious minds. If you're drawn to stories of resilience, self-discovery, and the human quest for belonging, then you're in for something remarkable. I want to introduce you to Hasina Knox, an incredible author who's sharing her remarkable journey with the world. Her autobiography, Longing to Belong, An Orphan's Story, is a deeply personal and inspiring account of her experiences as an international adoptee. Don't just hear it from me. As the author herself so eloquently put it, as I contemplate the title of my autobiography, an overwhelming rush of emotion surges within me while I think, wonder, and question. Why was I an orphan? What happened to my birth parents? Will I ever have the chance to see them again? Am I worthy of being loved or showing love? Where do I, as a person, on this big blue marble, truly belong? Join me on my emotional and transformative journey as I share the challenges and triumphs of my international adoption. Whether you faced similar challenges or seek inspiration, my story guides those seeking connection and understanding. In this captivating autobiography, Hasina Knox defies all odds to discover inner strength and seek identity, hope, and a sense of belonging. This inspiring story guides readers through the challenges as the author explores various aspects of her life including her adoptive family, school experiences, unexpected romance, work environment, stay-at-home mom, Christian living, the quest to find her birth parents, and becoming an author. Her journey is one of overcoming obstacles and inspiring others. She shares her emotional walk in life and provides practical advice and insights within each chapter. You can find her book in paperback everywhere online, and we have something extra special for you Canadian listeners. On May 25th, 2024, she will be having a book signing at the Coles Bookstore at Eglinton Square Mall at Victoria Park, Eglinton in Toronto from 2 to 5 p.m. Support your artists and tell her Strange Places says hello. Links to everything Hasina Knox will be in this episode's description, so don't miss out. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. I'm your host, Billy Dean Shoemate III, and can you hear it in my voice? Still, can you hear it? Yeah, it still sounds like this. It's been, what for you, what, that three weeks? This is the gnarliest upper respiratory infection I've ever had, and this persistent dry hacking cough will not go away. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun. I'm having a good time. <laughs> no, I really am giving, having a good time. It's, it's uh, one of my podcasts, No Disclosure. It's quite different from this. It's a weird news podcast where we look up just the weirdest, dumbest stuff that we can in the news, and we comment on it, and it's loud, and it's boisterous, and it's crazy. So, you know, I'm, and I started that in 2019. So I've been screaming into a microphone, you know, for five years. That podcast tears up my throat on a good day. And I've had to take, you know, these whole three weeks off. I haven't been able to record that, but I am having fun because I at least get to do this. Because on this show, yeah, my voice is just rotten, absolutely destroyed because of this insane upper respiratory infection. But, you know, I, I can still talk. This is a different delivery. You know, I can still do that. So, anyway, that aside... It's good to be back. I'm glad I'm able to talk enough to do Strange Places. So, where are we going this week for this one? Well, everywhere. And I'll tell you why. In the heart of Philadelphia, a city steeped in history and culture, a mysterious phenomenon has been unfolding for decades. It began with a single, unassuming tile quietly installed on a city street, bearing a cryptic message that would baffle residents and visitors alike. This little tile, made of linoleum and asphalt sealant, was small, only about the size of a license plate, but its impact was immense. The message, scrawled in bold uppercase letters, read, Toynbee Idea in Movie 2001 Resurrect Dead on Planet Jupiter. Yeah. It was a phrase that seemed to come from nowhere. 
and its meaning was anybody's guess. Now, as the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, more tiles began to appear. They popped up on street corners and alleyways on sidewalks, always bearing the same enigmatic message. It was as if the city itself was speaking to its inhabitants, but in a language that no one could quite decipher. The tiles were clearly handmade with a DIY aesthetic that added to their mystique. They were not sleek, not polished, but rather kind of rough and unrefined, you know, like like a raw, uncut, kind of gemstone looking. Despite their crude appearance, the titles possessed an otherworldly allure. They seemed to hold secrets and stories beyond comprehension, and people were drawn to them like crazy. Some tried to decipher the message, poring over the words and symbols, searching for hidden meanings and codes. Others simply admired their beauty, taking photos and sharing them with friends and family. But no matter how you approach the tiles, one thing was certain. One thing was certain. They were a mystery, a puzzle waiting to be solved. Today, over 700 of these enigmatic tiles can be found in major cities across the eastern U.S. and even parts of South America. They've become a beloved and iconic part of Philadelphia's street art scene with new tiles still appearing to this day. The Toynbee tiles, as they've come to be known, I looked it up, I had trouble pronouncing it when I was writing this, <laughs> are a public art project shrouded in mystery, sparking foundation and curiosity in all who encounter these things. They're a reminder that even in the most mundane places, there can be beauty, intrigue, and wonder waiting to be discovered. And for those who dare to explore, to seek out the unknown and the unexplained, the Toynbee tiles are a siren call, beckoning them to come and uncover whatever secrets they have. I know it's not ghosts, it's not UFOs, it's not a cryptid, but this is very strange places, <laughs> trust me. This is really strange. And once we dive into it, I'm amazed I haven't done this one sooner. This came across my desk quite a while back, and I've been wanting to do it because, I mean, this is, it's a complete mystery. And anywhere that these tiles pop up kind of becomes a strange place. It's a fascinating one. I know we gravitate more towards the paranormal, you know, the supernatural, that kind of stuff on, on this show. But I think that things like this that are tied to things like cryptic communications, secret societies, hidden knowledge. Oh yeah, we're going to go there. That's perfect for a podcast like this. I know we don't tackle that kind of stuff very much, but come on, conspiracies, secret societies, you know, stuff like that, things like this, supposedly hidden knowledge and messages. Oh yeah, this has strange places written all over it. I know it's quite different than the stuff we usually do. But we got to do more stuff like this, man. Stuff like this is fascinating. The first tile was discovered in 1985 on South Street in Philly, a vibrant and eclectic neighborhood known for its artistic vibe and kind of bohemian culture. It was a small rectangular piece of linoleum, roughly the size of a license plate, embedded in the asphalt of the street. The tile surface was rough and weathered with a message scrawled in bold uppercase letters that seemed to leap out at passersby. I'll tell you again. Toynbee Idea and Movie 2001 Resurrect Dead on Planet Jupiter. Enigmatic, to say the least. Its meaning was anyone's guess. At first, many people thought it was a prank. A clever and cryptic joke left behind by a mischievous artist or a group of rebellious teenagers. But as more tiles began to appear, each bearing the same mysterious message, it became clear that something more complex was at play. Some believed it was a message from a secret society, a cryptic communication meant to be deciphered only by those in the know. Others thought it was the work of a disgruntled artist, someone who had been rejected by the mainstream art world and was seeking revenge through a series of, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sub uh, subversive installations, right? As news of the tiles spread, they became a source of fascination for locals and tourists alike. People would stop and stare, trying to make sense of the strange words and symbols. Some would take pictures, hoping to capture the essence of the tile and its enigmatic message. Others would try to decipher the code, poring over the words, symbols, like I said, looking for anything 
Despite their best efforts, the meaning of the tiles remains elusive. It is a mystery that seemed to deepen with each passing day. Now, as the years went by, the tiles became an integral part of Philadelphia's scene. It's a powerful allure that these things kind of have. It's, 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 it's kind of spooky. The answers, much like the tiles themselves, are completely hidden, some say, waiting to be uncovered by some intrepid sleuth or curious adventurer. As more tiles appeared, the mystery deepened, like a slow-burning fire that refused to be extinguished. They were found in various locations, from busy street corners to quiet alleyways, each one a tiny puzzle piece and a much larger enigma. Each tile was identical, with the same message and a small stylized image of a planet believed to be Jupiter, a gas giant already shrouded in mystery and intrigue, making it even weirder, right? The tiles were handmade, DIY. Kind of like a whispered secret only meant for a select few. The crude appearance of these, it kind of led credence to the kind of otherworldly allure, as if they held secrets and stories like ancient artifacts from a long lost civilization. You know, rough, uneven edges, bold uppercase letters that shout out to passers by, solve me, figure me out. And yet, Despite their apparent simplicity, the tiles remained a conundrum. They couldn't help... Everybody who walked by these things, they couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and curiosity. They just kind of drew you to them. They stuck out. They're so weird. People were wondering, I mean, what inspired whoever to create these agnomatic tiles? They seemed to hold a power beyond mere words and images, a power to inspire and intrigue, to make us question our assumptions and seek out the unknown. Theories about the tiles' origins and meaning abound. A kaleidoscope of possibilities that continue to fascinate and intrigue. Some think they're the work of, like I said, an artist. As you can tell from what I'm telling you here, I mean, there's so little information about this stuff, about what the hell these are. They say that the artist, whoever it is, driven by a desire to challenge the status quo and the conventions of galleries and museums just did this. Others think the tiles are a form of street art meant to challenge our perceptions in public space and the role of art in our lives. This uh, perspective sees the tiles as a form of urban activism, a way to reclaim the city streets and turn them into a canvas for creative expression. The tiles, in this view, are a declaration of independence, some say. A statement that art belongs to everyone, not just a privileged few. That there are those who see the tiles as a message from maybe a secret society or a mysterious individual seeking to convey a hidden truth or maybe some kind of uh, like a prophecy. This theory is fueled by the tiles' cryptic message and the stylized image of the Jupiter, which some believe hold, you know, some kind of symbolic significance. Perhaps, I mean, the thinking goes that tiles are a part of the larger puzzle. A hidden code that only some initiated somewhere can decipher. Some see the tiles as a form of performance art, a commentary on the transience of human existence and the, you know, impermanence of art itself. Others believe they're a tribute to the power of human creativity, a celebration of the imagination and the human spirit. And then there are those who see the tile simply as a mystery, an enigma, to be, you know, enjoyed and pondered without necessarily seeking a deeper meaning or explanation. Regardless of the theory, one thing is clear. The tiles have captured our imagination, inspiring a sense of wonder and curiosity. Everybody, eventually, that has a YouTube channel or podcast or whatever, is going to tackle this one. Seems I'm no no exception. (laughs) Now, one of the most intriguing aspects of the Toynbee tiles is their connection Obviously, if you, you know, are a movie fan at all, you probably caught this. 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Holy shit, that came out in 68? Oh my god, I had no idea that movie was that old. I'm looking at my fact check notes, you know, because I fact check everything. That was 60, whoa. (laughs) Really? Did I type that down right? No. I gotta check this, hold on. That's gonna freak me out. 68, really? It's, It's that old? Okay, holy cow, that movie did come out in 1968. Jiminy Christmas. 
Wow. 2001, A Space Odyssey. Okay, let's get back to it. That just freaked me out. The movie, directed by the great Stanley Kubrick, is a groundbreaking sci-fi epic that explores themes of human evolution, technology, and existence. The film's enigmatic and beautifully orchestrated ending, which features a mysterious black monolith and a journey through a wormhole, has spawned countless interpretations and theories. The tiles reference to movie 2001 has led many to speculate about a possible connection between the two. Some believe the tiles are a reference to the film's themes, perhaps even a call to action or a message from someone who has unlocked the secrets of the universe. Yeah, people say that. The theories are everywhere. The film's exploration of human evolution and technology's impact on society may be seen as a parallel to... You know, the tile's message of resurrect dead on planet Jupiter. How odd. What a weird, what a weird statement. I don't know, suppose it art project or not. That message has a bit of an ominous kind of tone to it, doesn't it? This could be interpreted as a call, right? To revive or rebirth human civilization on a new planet. I don't know why you'd choose Jupiter. <laughs> That's probably the planet that I would pick the last to build life on. I mean, it's only got a storm on it. It's been raging for, you know, what, 300 years? <laughs> it's probably the last place I'd pick. But anyway, it's, you know, this kind of echoes the film's themes of transformation and transcendence. Still, I mean, the connection to 2001, A Space Odyssey, also raises questions about the tile's creator's intentions. Were they inspired by the film's exploration of human existence and the mysteries of the universe? Did they see the film as a catalyst for their own artistic expression and message? Was it kind of their muse? The tile's cryptic message and stylized image of Jupiter may be seen as a form of homage to Kubrick's iconic film, or perhaps even a continuation of its themes and ideas. The Toynbee tile's message, much like the film's ending, remains open to interpretation, leaving us to ponder the mysteries of the universe and our place within it. As we continue to uncover new tiles, and piece together the puzzle of their meaning, which we're no closer to, we may yet uncover a deeper connection to Kubrick's masterpiece and the secrets it holds. Maybe it has something to tell us about the movie. Some say. I'm just giving you the both ends of it, right? Hi there. This episode is brought to you by April Jones, the podcaster for Preschool Preach. Preschool Preach, formerly known as the Birth to Life Early Care Institute, is a podcast platform that addresses topics for children birth through five. They're a welcoming community that embraces everyone with a listening ear and an open heart. Make sure to check out their current episode, Little Feet at Home Library. Let them know what you think. A link will be provided in this episode's description. Check it out. The Toynbee tiles, in case you're wondering, have also been linked to the historian Arnold Toynbee. That's, well, it's spelled the same way, T-O-Y-N-B-E-E, -E, whose work on the rise and fall of civilizations may hold clues to the tiles' meaning. Toynbee's theories on the uh, cyclical nature of history and the role of creativity in shaping human destiny may be reflected in the tiles' message, which seems to hint at the possibility of resurrecting the dead on another planet. This connection is fascinating, as Toynbee's work explores the idea that civilizations are born, grow, decay, and are reborn, much like the tile's message of resurrecting the dead. There's a, there's a link there. Toynbee's book, A Study of History, is a sprawling masterpiece, in my opinion, that examines the rise and fall of civilizations across time. He argues that civilizations are shaped by their responses to challenges and that creativity, um, you know, kind of plays a crucial role in their development. The Tile's message, with its reference to resurrect dead on planet Jupiter, may be seen as a call to action, urging humanity to harness its creative potential to overcome the challenges of existence and achieve a, a kind of rebirth or transcendence, right? The connection to Toynbee's work also raises questions about the tiles, um, you know, creator's intentions. I mean, were they inspired by Toynbee's theories on the cyclical nature of history and the power of creativity? 
Did they see the tiles as a way to spread messages of hope and transformation, urging humanity to strive for something greater? The tiles, beyond weird and cryptic message and stylized image of Jupiter, might be seen as an homage to Toynbee's ideas, or perhaps even a continuation of his work. The link to Toynbee's work adds another weird layer of depth to the Toynbee tiles enigma. It invites us to consider the possibilities of human creativity and the power of ideas to shape our destiny. I don't know what the message of the Toynbee tiles is, but it seems to be sparking a lot of talk like this. So, was it the intention? Whether it was or not, it seems to be working. <laughs> the tiles message, much like Toynbee's theories, remains open leaving us to ponder the mysteries of existence. But is it open really? Is there a meaning to all this that somebody out there knows? Despite countless websites, numerous investigations, theories all over the place, I can't even tell you how many things I've researched. And this is all I've come up with. It's fascinating how little we have. The identity of the person or group behind these tiles remains a mystery. It's a puzzle. I think it is. Some believe it's the work of a single person. <laughs> a single person with a lot of frequent flyer miles, I'll tell you that. I doubt it's a single person. 700, really? They say it's a lone artist or activist with a vision and a mission. Others think it's a collective effort, multiple peoples contributing to the project over the years collaborative endeavor that spanned decades. And naturally, with something like this, people cry conspiracy, even with the, you know, possible 2001 A Space Odyssey reference. This wouldn't be the first time that Stanley Kubrick was linked to some kind of possible uh, conspiracy or cover-up. If you've never heard about the... <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. If you never heard about the Stanley Kubrick slash The Shining slash Apollo 11 link... That's a rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't know if that's a rabbit hole that we would talk about on Strange Places. I'm not sure if I want to entertain that. But there is a rumor. I don't know if you heard about this. But there was a rumor that the government got Stanley Kubrick to do their, I guess, you know, supposed fake moon landing footage. That the person they got to do that was Stanley Kubrick. Mostly because 2001 A Space Odyssey was so believable and so good that they wanted a pro director, you know, to quote unquote fake this footage and to, I guess, work through or deal with what he'd been charged to do, you know, charged with. He would hide things, supposedly. He would hide things in his film that hinted at, hey, I'm the guy that filmed the, you know, footage for Apollo 11 for the moon landing. And uh, there's a, quite a compelling list of arguments. It's an interesting rabbit hole. I don't know, maybe we will talk about it someday, but... <laughs> it's um, it's kind of spooky. Now, the tiles creator, known only as the Toynbee Tiler, has become kind of an urban legend, not just here. South America, too, remember that. A shadowy figure whose true identity may never be known. This anonymity has only added to the allure of the tiles, fueling speculation and curiosity. Some have attempted to uncover this, scouring the streets for clues, camping out next to the tiles, trying to find out where the next one's popping up and who's doing it. Embracing the enigma is kind of an integral part of their charm, I think. The Toynbee Tiler's identity may remain a secret, but their legacy lives on through the tiles. A testament to the power of art, I think, and ideas to inspire and intrigue no matter what the message is. Whether the work of one person or many, the Toynbee Tiles is a remarkable achievement. A sprawling installation that has captured the imagination of countless people around the world. As we continue to ponder the mystery of the Toynbee Tiles, we're reminded that sometimes the most fascinating things in life are the ones we can't fully understand. The Toynbee Tiler's anonymity has become an integral part of the tile's mystique. A reminder that art and ideas can transcend individual identity and speak to something deeper and way more universal. And so, the search for the truth behind the Toynbee Tiles continues, a journey that may never have an end, 
but one that's sure to remain fascinating and intriguing for years to come. The Toynbee Tiles, like I said, became an integral part of Philadelphia's street art scene, with many residents and visitors seeking out new tiles and documenting their findings online. It's not hard to find. The tiles' mysterious messages and cryptic symbols have captivated the imagination of every city they're in, inspiring a devoted following of enthusiasts who enjoy... They, they kind of, as I would, eagerly search <laughs> for new installations to share their discoveries on social media. This grassroots movement has transformed, transformed the tiles into kind of a beloved and iconic part of the city's cultural landscape. The city's not fucking with it, which is amazing. With many regarding them as a symbol of Philadelphia's quirky and creative spirit, and that's the same for all these other cities too. They kind of became a part of the city's lore. The tiles have also inspired a thriving community of artists and interpreters who create their own and responses to these tiles. Yeah, their own tiles with responses to those tiles. Some have created elaborate theories and explanations for the tiles meaning while others have used them as a starting point for their own creative projects this outpouring of creativity and imagination is a testament to the power of the Toynbee tiles to inspire and provoke and has helped to cement their place as a beloved and integral part of street art in a world where so much is known and explained the Toynbee Tiles remains a refreshing enigma to me and to a lot of other people. One of the reasons I chose to do it, to, you know, talk about it on an episode, it's a reminder that sometimes the most fascinating things in life are ones that we can really never understand. They invite us to slow down, to look closely, and to ponder the mysteries of the universe. They remind us that art and creativity can be found in unexpected places and that even in the most mundane settings, there can be beauty and wonder waiting to be discovered. Like the Talmud says, wherever you look, there is something to be seen. And so the Toynbee tiles continue to captivate and inspire, a constant reminder of the power of art and imagination to transform and enrich any landscape. These small, unassuming tiles have managed to capture the imagination of countless people. Like I said, I mean, even the most ordinary looking objects can hold extraordinary secrets and meanings. You know? You never know what you might stumble upon. You never know, you know when you might stumble upon a piece of the Toynbee tiles. Who knows what secrets they hold. If I sounded vague throughout this episode, it's because we really have... <laughs> Almost nothing. It's crazy. But I think despite the message, and God knows what it is, despite who created it, despite the message, something weird kind of happened with these tiles. A side effect, as it were. Be it unintended or, or, or intended. They lit up an art scene. They created artists. They encouraged people to stay curious, open-minded, to always be on the lookout, expect the unknown, to stumble upon something that changes their life forever, whether they know the tiles are there or not. It didn't only create an art scene, or uh, let, me, uh, let me rephrase that, it didn't only reinvigorate kind of a street art scene. In some cities, it created one, especially in South America. So despite the message, Despite why these Toynbee tiles, you know, are real. Let me look up something up real quick. Despite what the message is, I think that they still serve a, a, a huge purpose. Ray, Brad, uh, Ray Bradbury. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's another one. I was, uh, the, the, uh, what, am, what am I trying to say? The theories are, are endless. I could dedicate multiple episodes to this. Ray Bradbury. Another possible interpretation is that the Toynbee reference comes from the science fiction writer Ray Bradbury's short story The Toynbee Convector, which alludes to Toynbee's idea that in order to survive, humankind must always rush to meet the future and believe in a better world, 
and must always aim far beyond what is practically possible in order to achieve something barely within reach. Thus, the message might be that humanity ought to strive to colonize Jupiter, as in Clark's work or something greater to survive. Arthur C. Clarke, yeah. His short story, Jupiter 5, involves a spaceship named Arnold Toynbee on a mission to Jupiter. It contains elements in common with 2001. David Mamet, 4AM, playwright. He spoke of his belief that the tiles are an homage to one of his plays and has described the weirdest thing that ever happened. In his 1983 work, 4AM, a radio host based on Larry King impatiently listens to a caller who contends that the movie 2001, ah, based on the writings of Arnold Toynbee, speaks of the plan to reconstitute life on Jupiter. The radio show host quickly points out the factual errors in the caller's assertion and the logical fallacies of his plan. Researchers for the 2011 documentary Resurrect Dead, The Mystery of the Toynbee Tiles, should watch it, it's pretty good. Actually, I watched it in preparation for this. Claims to have uncovered several pieces of evidence that predate Mamet's play, including a 1980 call by the Tyler, supposedly, to Larry King's radio show. They cite a 1983 article in the Philadelphia Inquirer, which mentions a local man contacting talk shows and newspapers to spread the message about bringing the dead to life on Jupiter, as depicted in the film 2001, which makes some... I think this... If any explanation is the most plausible, the playwright one's pretty close, but still, we don't know. Right? Toynbee, 20th century British historian, Arnold J. Toynbee, right? Ray Bradbury, Stanley Kubrick. This just goes everywhere. <laughs> it's, 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 you could talk about this all day. These things are deeply bizarre, deeply mysterious. As I said, 1983, a guy identifying himself as a social worker, his name was James Marasco. He contacted talk shows, newspapers with a theory of colonizing Jupiter. Kind of a, you know, kind of a cuckoo guy. <laughs> they still don't know 100% if it's him or not. A lot of people say it's extremely unlikely. 1996, Kansas City Star editor Doug Wargle discovered a Toynbee tile at the corner of 13th and Grand in downtown Kansas City. Which Kansas City? This is, where are my notes? Hello, notes. Okay, Missouri. <laughs> oh, I need to get more detailed sometimes. Investigating the story seven years later, he found that the tile was still there, and he determined that the street had last been resurfaced in 1996. Comparing the tile to those in other cities, a local police detec detective felt that clearly it was created by the same hand and concluded that despite referring to a movement, the creator was acting alone, indicating this whole thing is done by one person. Very doubtful, like I said. Rich person's got to have mad frequent flyer miles. There's theories everywhere. New tiles have been popping up since 03. Between 02 and 07, that was the biggest uh, influx in tiles, but they're still popping up today. They're glued with a thicker layer of asphalt glue, sealant, you know, or uh, sealant than the older ones. So the materials to make the tiles are being updated with the times. These are made by somebody who obviously knows how to place a street tile without messing it up, but, you know, but that doesn't really narrow things down, does it? <laughs> The new tiles are wrapped in tar paper placed on a busy street early in the morning. From this find and other evidence, I believe that the pressure exerted by cars driving over the tile for weeks on end actually helps to push the tile into the road surface, giving it a DIY look, but a professionally installed look because people are saying that whoever the tiler is, that they have experience working on roads. I disagree with this. Because eventually this tar paper wears away, exposing the message. It kind of lets the cars do the work, you know, which indicates that, yeah, maybe there's some knowledge there, but not anybody with any kind of professional equipment. This is a weird one. And all these cities are refusing to remove them. 
we can't come up with a verdict on these because there's so little information. We have no idea where these things are coming from, who's making them, why. But it's interesting and actually kind of heartwarming to see that these tiles have indeed created a movement, created inspiration. And whether that's the um, intention or not, or whether it's ramblings by some lunatic somewhere, <laughs> or some disgruntled artist making these out of hate and frustration, something good came out of it, and I'm always for that. So what do you think, ladies and gentlemen, of the Toynbee tiles? Let me know. Send me a message on here, or your podcast uh what am i <laughs> i can't talk today my voice is about shot see it's been weeks man can you believe it it's been weeks and i still sound like this god let me know on your podcast platform there we go of choice or go to asylum817.com oh boy my throat that's asylum817.com to check out all things strange places as well as my other artistic ventures all of our social media links are there as well as link to get to our patreon account and uh, that'll be in this episode's description. Where as little as a dollar a month, you can get everything from bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, giveaways of certain tiers, outtakes, bloopers, a podcast just for the patrons. Yeah, name any other podcast that does that. Special thanks to the patrons, by the way. The Kunkel Homestead YouTube channel, Donald Haynes, Dilligaff, I appreciate all you guys. Now, are we ever going to run out of strange places to talk about? I don't think so. Because every town has a strange place, and maybe one day... We'll visit yours. 